Hello and welcome to Motorpoint, I'm Tim. This is a Nissan Qashqai. For years, the Qashqai was exactly like a bar of Cadbury's dairy milk. It was the default choice, the go-to car for anyone that wanted a decent family SUV or a car that could do anything. But over the years, the Qashqai's success has meant competitors have come onto the market. The Kia Sportage, the Ford Cougar, the Galaxy Smooth Milk. They're all great choices. So in this day and age, what does the Qashqai offer? We're gonna find out once I've eaten the rest of this. And yes, I have started it already because I was hungry. Yes, yes, I know a new Qashqai came out in 2021. That car is very good, but it's more expensive than the old one. And there's a waiting list for it. This nearly new one is only 19 grand. It's available to drive away today, right now from Motorpoint Peterborough, but please don't because we've not finished filming it yet. This generation of Nissan Qashqai first came out in 2014. It was facelifted in 2017. It got a thicker V-shaped grille here. High spec cars got LED headlights like these. And all of them got these really distinctive daytime running lights, which look a bit like you're wincing in text speak. Oh. This is a high spec Techno model. It gets 19 inch alloy wheels. If you get lower spec ones, they get 18, 17, even 16 inch alloy wheels. And the smaller ones are a little bit more comfortable. Another thing that helps comfort is Nissan's intelligent ride control. It's on all cash cars. Basically uses the front brakes and then the back brakes as you go over bumps in the road to smooth the car out. So there's less of that kind of weird head jolting you get. That's definitely going on a different website, not YouTube, but it does work and it makes things a little bit more comfortable. Around the back, I still think Nissan Qashqai looks modern with these tail lights, but the boot is starting to look a little bit dated on this version just because it's smaller than the one in the new Qashqai and the Kia Sportage and the Hyundai Tucson by a noticeable margin. But how much stuff can you actually fit in it? Unfortunately, it's time to find out with the most point big boot challenge. The only challenge is um, whether I fall asleep doing it. We interrupt that wonderful stop motion thing uh, to bring you news that these four bags don't fit in the boot of the Qashqai. Now, I think if I took the parcel shelf out and lowered the adjustable boot floor, they would just about squeeze in. But yeah, it is noticeable that modern SUVs have got bigger boots than this. But there we go, the big boot challenge claims a victim. Can the Qashqai claw back some practicality points in the back? Well, yeah, I've got loads of room for my feet. My knees have got enough room and I've got decent headroom, despite the fact this car being a higher spec one has a panoramic sunroof, which floods the interior with light and it means your kids can spot planes to distract them on long journeys. We've also got easily accessible ISOFIX points. There aren't any USBs though, so their iPads are probably gonna go flat halfway through the road trip. Up front, the Qashqai's cabin is robust and well-made. It's just not of a particularly high quality. It's gonna convince you you're in a Rolls Royce. The infotainment system is quite dated, the graphics aren't great and it's a bit slow to use. However, 2019 onwards cars did come with CarPlay and Android Auto, so you can plug your phone in and forget about the Nissan system. I've got cubbies everywhere, it's very practical. I've got a 12 volt socket here, a USB under here, heated seats, and part Nappa leather seats in these higher spec ones, which are very nice. I would try and get a car with the Bose sound system because it really elevates your tunes and it's pretty pumping, to be honest. But anyway, enough about that. Let's take it for a drive and see if it's comfy. The first thing you notice behind the wheel of the Nissan Qashqai is that it does give you that secure high up SUV driving position, which is half the reason it became so popular way back when. And you still feel, I don't know, a sense of security from sitting up high. And you used to be able to see over other cars when you're in an SUV, but now every other car is an SUV, so it doesn't really work. In terms of engines, Qashqai comes with either a 1.3 litre petrol, this one's got 160 horsepower, so it's quite pokey, or a 1.5 litre diesel with 115 horsepower. This petrol is going to get about 40, 45 mpg at best, the diesel will crack 50 pretty easily. Anyway, I'm going to get out on some dual carriageway and tell you how refined and comfortable it is when you're doing big motorway trips with your lovely little darlings in the back seat, not screaming, not crying, not punching each other, just being friends. <laughs> right, I'm getting onto my dual carriageway. I'm accelerating up to 70 miles down. I'll tell you what, this engine's actually pretty revvy. This 1.3 petrol and it's more than fast enough. You're not gonna think, oh, it's a 1.3 litre engine. It's perfectly fine. Wind noise is pretty refined. I'm not being deafened by tire noise. It's a long distance cruiser. This ticks all the boxes. Now it's got lots of safety kit as well. You've got automatic emergency braking, there's lane keep assist, which actually keeps you in your lane physically by moving the steering. 
And some Qashqai's even have blind spot monitoring in the mirrors as well, just to keep you safe. Now this did get a five star crash test result at Euro NCAP, but that was back in 2014 and the test has got tougher since then. But yeah, five stars is going to be a safe family car, which is probably why you're buying this. But anyway, we're going to get some twisty roads and see what it's like to drive down one of those. Right, I'm on the twisty road now in the Qashqai, and one thing this won't do, despite being a good do-it-all car, is put a massive smile on your face on a twisty road. Sure, it grips and it feels confident down a twisty road, and it's got decent Michelin tires on it, this one, but you don't buy this to have a race, do you? It's a family SUV, but it's comfortable over all these bumps. I feel them, but I'm just gently wafting along, and it's pretty serene to drive, to be honest. I can see out. I'm happy. I can get my kids to football practice, confident in the knowledge that if it rains or if the road gets a bit slippery, I'll be all right. It's a safe, secure family car. It's just not very exciting. But anyway, enough waffle. Back to you, Tim, for an outro. So should you go for an older style of cash car like this if you want a good family SUV? Well, yeah, why not? It's still great value. This is 19 grand for a lot of car. It's still roomy inside. It's still comfy. And if you get a later one with the smartphone mirroring stuff, you avoid most of the dated infotainment. I mean, sure, the boot could be a bit bigger, but come on, this is a cracking value car. And if you go to motorpoint.co.uk, you'll see we've got a huge range of this generation cash car, uh, unbeatable prices and you can drive them away today, unlike the new one where there's a waiting list. Thank you for watching. Hopefully this was helpful. Please click like and also subscribe to the channel. So we've got loads more used car reviews coming up very soon, although I don't get to eat chocolate and all of them, sadly. I'll see you next time.